Well, it seems the owners of Lord of the Rings Embracer Group is splitting into three different companies. Embracer Group splitting into three. Everything you need to know. Asmodee Coffee Stain will be spun out of separate publicly listed entities and Middle Earth Enterprises to front remaining group. Well, before we get fully into the video, I have a few things here to share and talk about. Do me a favor, like, share, and the most important part right now is subscribe to the channel. Move the mouse over the subscribe button and hit it. Because without your subscription, we don't grow. So you would help me immensely by hitting that button. Embracer Group announced the split into three separate companies. Now this is, Embracer Group has laid off hundreds of people in the last little bit. They've shut a bunch of studios and now they're splitting it up into focus on three different entities. This is probably a good thing. Um, I know there has been talk with Hasbro uh, where people want to see them split off Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons by their own entity. And this will prove can be done in that situation for Embracer Group. The three entities created will independently publicly listed on NASDAQ Stockholm. These companies are currently being referred to as Asmodee Group, Coffee Stain and Friends, and Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends, although the latter two will be given a new name at a later date. While Asmodee and Coffee Stain will become the new listing for on NASDAQ Stockholm, Middle Earth will remain within Embracer Group as it's currently listed. This listing will also be renamed. Now, this is not a simple thing. They're going to do this over 12 months. Asmodee is going to split off and then Coffee Stain sometime in 2025. So this is the idea that they're going forward. Now, the most interesting part of this is Embracer Group owns over 9,000 IPs. They are the rights holders to a very vast majority of games out there. Uh, Asmodee will focus on tabletop gaming. Coffee Stain will range from indie to double A games for PC, console, and mobile. And of course, Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends will be their triple A gaming sector. Embracer said that there will be uh, collaborations around companies and IPs across three businesses, but this will be handled on market terms. So like with Hasbro and their Lord of the Rings set where they're paying royalties for that set to be out there, it's going to be dependent on the way the market is swinging at the time. Embracer Group CEO Lars Wing, Winged Fors will remain the owner of all three, has said he intends to form a long-term ownership structure. I've always viewed my role as CEO, the main owner of, of the, and to be a promoter for successful entrepreneurs, game makers and business lenders in achieving more success. This will not change. The split follows the end of a nine months restructuring, which saw Embracer Group close Volition Games, makers of Saints Row, uh, Free Radical Design and Campfire Cabal, and then sell off Saber Interactive and Gearbox makers of Borderlands. The layoff will also of 1,400 staff members. So D Group will focus strictly on board games. Um, notable IPs being Ticket to Ride, Seven Wonders. I have Seven Wonders on the, on the shelf behind me. Um, Exploding Kittens, great game, pretty neat. Catan, of course, on there also. And then they, they have a financing agreement of 900 million, is that euros? But the important part of it is the debt refinancing for the group restructuring. And in Coffee Stain and Friends, which is THQ, we'll get more into that in a minute. Amplifier Game, Investment, uh, Ghost Ship, Tarsier, Tuxedo Labs, and more. I uh, control over 200 IPs, including Deep Rock Galactic, Goat Simulator, Satisfaction, Wreckfest, Teardown, and Veldheim. Meanwhile, free-to-play games like EI will include Easy Brain, Decca, Crazy Labs, and Cryptic, handled such uh, as Sudoku, Blockuto, Jigsaw Puzzle, and more. This uh, will also handle the current licensed free-to-play games such as Star Trek Online and Neverwinter's Nights Online. Coffee Stains will have a CEO, uh, Anton well Westberg, 
will remain in his leading row. The CEO for THQ Nordic, Amplifier, DECA Games, and Easy Brain will report to him as of today. So that's that's a massive change right there. And in Middle Earth Enterprises will will consist of Crystal Dynamics with Tomb Raider, um, Dam Buster Studios, Edios Montreal, Flying Wild Hog Studios, Tripwire Vertical Games, Warhorse Studios. So the reason why I'm bringing up Warhorse Studios and also THQ, they're the front lines of where the screenshot below me is from, Kingdom Deliverance. Two, which was recently announced. You probably have been seeing the trailers on that. So th this restructuring from Embracer Group will also bring something more for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which I tend to cover in a separate video. They also have 4A games among many others. So this is interesting uh, topic altogether. Embracer splitting everything up. They own so many IPs, it must be impossible to keep track of it. Also Embracer owned uh, businesses such as Metro Publisher, Planton and Dark Horse Comics free and free mode will also be part of this entity. That's, that's Dark Horse Comics. I wonder if we'll get a Lord of the Rings Dark Horse comic book come out soon enough. Uh, so in addition to Lord of the Rings, Tomb Raider, Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends will be responsible for Dead Island, King, uh, Killing for Kingdom Come Deliverance and Metro among others. Kingdom Come Deliverance, uh, they, they were under such scrutiny when they first came out because they stuck to the historical data. And this new one, they're, and they keep getting asked by game journalists how far the diversity is going to go in there. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out in the, the journalist media. Well, the management team is very, very extensive at this point. Bill Rogers and Anton Westburn uh, also have been appointed as executive management of Embracer Group as of today. Asmodee's current CEO, Stephanie Carvel, has also joined the team until he is replaced by Thomas Kogler. The executive management of Embracer Group now includes Lars Wings of Forge, Joanne Elkstrom, Karun Yap, Ian Gutlam, Anton Westberg, Phil Rogers, and Stefan Carvel. Wow, that, that's a, quite an interesting team that's going to lead this group. So is this good news for Embracer Group, them splitting up? Usually when they diverse shares like this, it's going to work out in a in very massive favor for the shareholders, which I believe I did read part of that article where the shareholders are on board with this split up of Embracer Group. You know, being able to focus a little bit more in-house, maybe we'll get normal games again instead of it being widely spread out where you always have to pick up narrative design studios to kind of shoehorn everything but I don't have my hopes up this is Embracer Group after all the Rings of Power is a failure of a show even though they're still making a second season but that's a different story Anyway, I'm your product game, Phoenix Sin and Shadow. I'm signing off here. I figured I'd bring you some interesting news. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.